All right, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the predator-prey model. And nobody likes to think about their rabbit or their guinea pig being a prey species, but that's, that's really truly who they are. And, and understanding that, understanding what that means for their behavior is a really important thing for us as owners to be aware of as we think about providing these animals the best home life that we possibly can. So the predator-prey model is really at the foundation of, of many of the ecosystems that are out there. It's really about different species competing for resources and looking for ways to survive. So first of all, let's talk about predators. Obviously, there's lots and lots of different types of predators. We think about the common ones like wolves and coyotes, but predators of all different shapes and sizes are rooted in doing one thing, and that is catching and killing other animals to feed on them. Um, again, you think about a coyote catching a rabbit, you can think about snakes using things like envenomation. You can think about whales swallowing up huge amounts of phytoplankton. Those are all examples of predators taking advantage of prey species for their survival. All right, so now let's talk about prey species. So by definition, prey species are animals that are eaten by other animals. Now prey species, just like predators, go about their daily lives trying to utilize the resources in their environments to survive and then reproduce. That's the goal of all living organisms. But as a prey species, they have the additional challenge of being predated. So their lives are not only about utilizing resources, but thinking and evolving ways to survive predation. So more of the common ways you may think of is things like camouflage. How can they hide from predators? You also have animals that are more active at dusk and dawn, like rabbits, so they avoid the common time frames where predators are out there. There's also the examples of animals who live in communities, again like rabbits, where they utilize communities and social groups as a survival mechanism to avoid predation. So now that we've kind of defined predator and prey, uh, we need to think about what does that mean to these animals in captivity? As pet owners, we do own both predators and prey. Dogs and cats and ferrets, obvious predators. Rabbits and rats and mice and gerbils, obvious prey species. And while they don't live in the wild, those natural behaviors, those natural physiological traits that define them as a predator or prey are still really, really relevant. And as pet owners, it's really our responsibility and should be our goal to think about those natural behaviors and how do we link those to living in captivity. So let's think about some natural behaviors that have changed by moving animals into captivity. Whether we're talking about a predator or a prey, if they were living in the wild, they are gonna spend a huge portion of their day looking for food, foraging, grazing, hunting, whatever the case would be. Now, what does that look like in captivity? There is no challenge. Their food magically floats down from the heavens. So they're not having to physically and mentally work for those foods like they would in the wild. We also think about in the wild that they're spending a huge amount of time looking for that food. That is foraging, so time that they're spending physically doing that. We also eliminate commonly that in captivity. So one of the things I constantly challenge owners to do, whether I'm talking about a predator and or a prey species, and think about things that we can do to expand that feeding time frame, to make it more difficult for them to find and ingest their food. So a couple of good examples of that would be thinking about some of your predator species. Let's talk about ferrets. What you can do there is use a technique called scatter feeding, where you take their food and you spread it out to different areas, potentially not only within their enclosure, but even outside of their enclosure. You don't change the amount that you're feeding them, you simply make it more difficult therefore more time consuming and more mentally stimulating for them to find their food. That also works really, really well in prey species. Think about rabbits and think about guinea pigs. We know that a huge portion of their diet is made up of hay. So if we want hay to be a big part of their diet, let's offer them hay in different ways. Whether we put it inside of a box, whether we hide some treats inside of it, different ways to decrease, or excuse me, to increase the amount of time that they spend eating their hay. So our goal as a pet owner should be to take those behaviors that we've talked about with predators and prey that we know that they are reliant on in the wild and try to connect those to the captive environment and our houses that they live in. But we want to do that in a way that doesn't add stress, doesn't add strain to these animals. So when we think about prey species, what are the things that they naturally do in the wild that require physical and mental stimulation? They burrow, okay? They explore their environments, they dig for their food, they chew on things. Those are natural behaviors that take physical and mental energy. So what are different ways that we can provide those same types of attributes in captivity? 
We can provide substrates that they can dig and burrow in. We can hide their snacks or their treats inside boxes that they can tear apart and chew into. We can provide safe environmental enrichment like apple sticks or willow sticks that they can chew on. Those are great ways to provide physical stimulation that also provides mental stimulation. So we wanna think about that with predators as well. We know that burrowing and digging and exploring are all part of those natural predatory behaviors. So what are the different substrates we can use? What are the different enclosures we can use? And there's lots of things that you can buy, but there's lots and lots of easy to do things at home, such as simply a cardboard box. Taking a cardboard box, applying a different substrate to it, and then applying a nutritional item or a food item, something that they can smell or something they know is in there, and then leaving it to them to devise the route through burrowing or through digging that they're gonna get access to that treat. There's so many different types of ideas that are out there that we can really take the time to understand and to try at home, knowing that all of them link back to those natural physical, mental, and behaviors that these animals exhibit in the wild. So now that we've talked about predators and we've talked about prey, and we know how each one of our munchkins, where they fit in those categories, I really challenge each one of you to think about things that you can do at home to stimulate that natural behavior. Whether that's the physical behavior of digging into something and foraging, whether that's the mental behavior of hiding their food or changing up where you feed them in their enclosure or changing around the things in their enclosure so it simply feels and looks different. All of those are great ways to provide physical and mental enrichment for these animals that again, link them to natural behaviors that are in the wild and tie that to how we take care of these animals in captivity. If you do fun things like that, you're gonna enjoy the time with your animal and you're gonna have a happier, healthier pet.